the biggest mistake I made as a VTuber. The biggest mistake I made as a VTuber is, well, just becoming a VTuber. And no, this isn't a joke, nor is it clickbait. It's actually just that simple. Here, let me explain. When I first found out about VTubing, I literally did zero research on it, other than figuring out what program I needed to make my VTuber model, how to load it onto OBS, and then how to track it with my webcam. I think I just slapped together some random free presets I found on Booth. I didn't even have like any big fancy debut. I pretty much just spent an hour making my model and then I put VTuber debut in my Twitch title and then just started streaming out last. I'm gonna guess we're gonna go to the male ward because I, I don't really want to go to the female ward and have to deal with crazy... <laughs> like this video if you remember during those times. Basically, I literally put zero effort into making my VTuber model because I was just so excited to start VTubing. And like, that's perfectly fine to do so when you're first starting out. Like, it got my foot in the door. But you know, looking back at everything I've done so far as a VTuber, I kind of wish I put more time and effort into thinking more about my character's concept and the content I wanted to make as a VTuber. Like, it's totally okay to want to have your VTuber model based off of how you look IRL, and there are tons of successful VTubers who have done exactly that. But even with that, they still kind of exaggerate something about their model that makes it a lot more appealing. And just, I don't know, I always kind of struggle with character design, and after doing this for a few years, I have realized how important it is to have a really compelling character design for your VTuber. YouTuber. Like, look at this! Fuzzy socks with a baby doll and shorts? Like, what was I thinking? Oh, and yeah, not only did I come up with a terrible character design, but the artist who worked on this model did some, uh, really weird things to my art. What the fuck? And when you combine all of that with my top tier rigging skills that I totally didn't learn from a single YouTube video in a day, well, uh, you get this. What the Yeah, that was pretty bad, but not as bad as a segue for today's sponsor, Tokyo Treat and Sakura Co. Do you want to experience different parts of Japan from the comfort of your own home? Well, now you can with these amazing snack boxes. Tokyo Treat is a monthly pop Japanese snack subscription box where they will send you up to 20 of the latest, most exclusive limited edition and seasonal flavored Japanese snacks that are only available in Japan. I remember when I lived in Japan for a little while, I used to love going to the different konbinis and grocery stores to see what the new and trendy snacks were every single month and they have some really cool snackies so it's pretty awesome that tokyo treat lets me get to experience the same thing without having to buy a super expensive plane ticket to you know have the same experience like some of the things that you can get are sakura pepsi japanese sake kit kats ramen and a bunch of other cool snackies seriously you really need to try the japanese sake kit kats they will change how you view kit kats and that's not Oh, we also have Sakura Co to talk about as well. Now, Sakura Co is another monthly Japanese snack subscription box, but this one's a little bit different than Tokyo Tree because you get 20 traditional, authentic, and artisan Japanese snacks. And I really want to emphasize the authentic part for this box because when you subscribe to Sakura Co, you are supporting local Japanese businesses. That's right, actual love and care were put into each snack in this box. And you don't just get snackies from the Sakura Co box, you also get Japanese tea and a special Japanese tableware item. This month's theme for Tokyo Tree is called Osaka Snacky Nation because Osaka is known for Japan's culinary capital. So, of course, Tokyo Tree is going to send some yummy goodies like a uh, chocolate orange Kit Kats, Kobe melon soda, and Okonomiyaki Senbei. Now I know what you're thinking. Orange chocolate Kit Kats, Mari, come on. And um, yeah, actually they're very good. I don't know how Japan does it every month with these Kit Kats, but they're so freaking good. I end up eating the whole bag in like a week. Now for Sakura Deco, this month theme had a heavy focus on mochi and fruit marvel. And we all know mochi is super popular in Japan. So when you combine that with Japan's abundance of juicy fruits, then you can get a variety of special goodies. Also, if you watched my Japanese snack tier list video in April, then you would remember me mentioning how there are so many different varieties of mochi that you can try, and boy oh boy did Sakura to Coast spoil me this month. Like, I got to try strawberry mochi manju, and it was so good! Actually, my favorite was the peach 
Kibidango because I am obsessed with peaches. Like, I don't know where it is in Japan, but when I went to like this little Japanese peach farm, the peaches were bigger than my head. And every time I would take a bite, just juice would just explode into my mouth. So yeah, it was amazing. And being able to try that in Dango is even better. It's the best fruit, honestly. That in cherries, of course. It also got paired with really amazing green tea. It's actually Gen Mai Cha. And I got to drink it from my cup that I got from April's Cherry Blossom box last month. And then I put that little teacup with my brand new tableware item, which was a Chinese thing and chai, chai, sum, chai, chai, chrysanthemum, 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 chrysanthemum. It, it's a cute little dish. Just look at it. I don't know. I know it doesn't match per se, but I really like how this looks. And I also like knowing that somebody actually handmade this. So yeah. And if you're wondering basically the difference between the two boxes that one is a trendy seasonal Japanese snacks where the other one is meant for more traditional Japanese snacks and tea. Basically, there's a box for everyone to experience a little part of Japan. So if you have a family member or friend who loves Japanese goodies, or you know, you're a weeb like me who wants to try out all of these cool little neat snacks, then you can. And you can do that by using code MARIYUME to receive $5 off your first Sakura Co. or Tokyo Treat box through my links down below this video. Thank you to Tokyo Treat and Sakura Co. for sponsoring this video. Now, where, where was I again? Oh yeah! You know, looking at all of my VTuber designs, I have asked my chat which one is their favorite, and still to this day, they say it's this design. And I kept asking myself, why does everybody like the pink woman? And it dawned on me the other day in my stream when someone said that her design is really eye-catching. And you know what? I'm gonna be honest. I know where your eyes are looking, where the eye-catching part is. Because when I asked chat about my design, I got this response. What do you mean? Pantone is not the main character! What are you talking about? I'm not an NPC! And no, I don't look like an NPC! Oh wait, maybe I do. <sighs> you know, something I never realized is how hard it is to come up with a good character concept. Like, I have spent so much money on these live 2D models, and I'm honestly not very happy with how any of them look because my chat was right. PM chat's outfit looks so much better than all of my outfits, and I didn't even draw her booba on it properly. But I realized that actual design and, like, color scheme for her outfit fits really well compared to mine, you know? Which kind of bums me out to some extent, but when I really think about its core values, it kind of makes sense. Even though I don't want to admit that PM Chan is better than me. I think I make up for it with my charming personality, personally. Like I said, having a compelling character concept is something that I really should have focused on when... I first became a VTuber rather than just becoming a VTuber without really putting in any thought about what being a VTuber meant or, you know, having any clear direction in what I wanted to do for VTubing because this has been pretty much holding me back for the past three years now. Like, I'm not perfect and neither is any of the content I make. Like, a lot of my videos on this channel are garbage and I'm still trying to figure out what direction I want to go as a content creator. I know that I really love being a VTuber and I have a few different ideas for some content that I want to make, but everyone has their own different ideal dream girl and I want this channel to be able to give you that kind of experience. So let me know down in the comments below what your thoughts are and what kind of content you really enjoy seeing on this channel. I was really happy to answer this question that I saw a couple of people asking in the comments and I was thinking about making this into kind of like a little video series, maybe kind of like a, not so much of an AMA, but maybe like a AMY, you know, for Ask Mariyume. So let me know if you like these kind of videos and I can definitely try to answer more of your questions about me and my VTubing experiences. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you again in the next video. Oh yeah, see.